She supports Maduro because Chavez said so. The president was very intelligent and intuitive, and he said Nicolás Maduro was to be his successor. The people digested the idea and accepted it. Analysts say Maduro is slowly becoming his own man. As time goes by, Maduro is turning more into himself, building his own identity. He is now more serene, with a strong authority. As Maduro takes on the role Chávez gave him a year ago, he's always reminding Venezuelans that for him and millions of others, Chávez is, and even now remains, commander-in-chief. Mariana Sánchez, Al Jazeera, Caracas, Venezuela. And joining us now is George Chicarello Mar. He's a professor of political science at Drexel University and the author of the new book, We Created Chavez, A People's History of the Venezuelan Revolution. Professor, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's first ask about this, this approach by Maduro, uh, embracing Chavez's techniques. Do you think it's a good way for him to go? Well, on some level, it's a necessity, right? Charisma is a part of politics, and, and certainly in Venezuela, being charismatic is, is a necessary aspect of politics. But it's, it's also clear that Nicolás Maduro knows that he is not Chávez. He knows that he cannot <laughs> actually be Chávez, and so has, has had to really prove himself politically in different ways. So is it working then for him? Is he gaining a lot of popularity in Venezuela? Now, we have a, the, the Chavistas were really on the ropes over the summer due to sort of a simultaneous political economic offensive by the opposition. But what we've seen, uh, according to sort of murmurs on the ground from the pollsters, is that recent weeks have seen a surge for the Chavistas and the Chavista candidates. And this is precisely because Nicolás Maduro has taken a strong line and has acted decisively against uh, economic speculation, those who are accused of overcharging for goods uh, that were sold in Venezuela. And this has actually paid political dividends as well as economic ones that, you know, the Chavistas now are energized and they see Maduro as someone who possibly could lead this revolution in the long run. And so what do you expect to happen then with this election? What do you think the outcome will be? Um, a, a few months back, it looked very good for the opposition in terms of maintaining some strength in some key, some key areas and also possibly gaining some. But I think what we're probably looking at now is a more narrow victory for the Chavistas. And the real key is going to be a couple of, of mayoral races, especially the metropolitan mayor race in Caracas, as well as the mayor of, of Maracaibo, which is an opposition stronghold. And if you see tomorrow, if you see the Chavistas come away with both of those elections, you'll know that it's been a very good, a very good turnout for the Chavistas. And help us understand why the opposition opposition is not gaining more ground, especially when you consider how much that country is suffering. There are major shortages. Why is Maduro's popularity not sliding more? Well, there was there was a slide in May after after uh, Maduro's election, uh, and it had a lot to do with shortages. It also had to, to do with the opposition's strategy of questioning the election. Um, but after a few months, what you've seen is the opposition kind of sliding back mm -hmm. into its traditional uh, dangers, namely uh, dividing, fighting with each other, and also not really having an answer to the government. So what you've seen is Maduro acting decisively against what he calls uh, parasitic capitalism, and the, the answer from the opposition has really not been very coherent. And the, the real difficulty for the opposition is that on the one hand, they don't have a political program to challenge Maduro. They claim that they would maintain most of what Chavez built. Um, and the second difficulty is that they're very ambivalent toward elections. And so they're claiming fraud in the April election, for example, still to this day. And yet they're urging their voters to go out and vote again tomorrow. And so this is a very difficult, a difficult proposition for the voters to swallow. You know, that was exactly my next question for you is frankly, the concerns about fraud and corruption. I mean, uh, no matter who wins, do we expect this to actually be a clean election? Uh, one of the virtues of the fact that the opposition has been so uh, so rigid in its rejection of elections in the past in Venezuela is that actually the, the, the very attention paid to the electoral system has made it one of the strongest in the world. This is recognized internationally. The Carter Center has you know, widely recognized the actual technical aspect of the elections to be, to be incredibly clean. And we can expect that to continue. And even the opposition is, accept, is accepting that. What they're saying is that their worry is that they need to have their people, they're observing the vote, to make make sure that the right people are voting, for example, and that no one who's accompanying someone else to vote uh, will, you know, will be pressing them to vote one way or the other. But the reality is these elections are incredibly clean. Mm. The election in April was very clean, and we can expect the same tomorrow. Okay, so it'll be a pivotal day without question. George Chicarella Mar from Drexel University, thank you for your time today. Thanks for having me.